Hello, so today we're going to review this, which is a GQ GMC 500 Plus. So this is one of the models of sort of genuinely fairly well priced Geiger counters you can get on Amazon and eBay. And the point is sort of it's a modern one that would be applicable for most people and do the functions a lot of people would want. And what I'm going to do in this video is just sort of do an initial impression, sort of review of it, how much I like it or not. Now, in this review I am going to factor in how much it costs compared to sort of other Geiger counters of a similar price range, um, the sort of size and how tough it feels. Now it's important to note it, but I believe this has two Geiger Muller tubes in this actually. If you look there, I'm pretty sure that's one there, and if you look there, there's definitely another one there. Now looking at this, I'm pretty sure it has a Soviet high range tube in it, and what I would assume would either be a Chinese or Soviet low range tube. So basically how it works is it's probably got an SBM20 equivalent tube for lower ranges. For the higher radiation ranges it probably uses the SI3BG or whatever it's called, the little glass ones. The reason being that obviously as they put two GM tubes in it, it these often work better having it um, Geiger counters that use one tube for one range and another tube for another range. So anyway, that's enough babbling to start with, let's turn it on. So you hold down the on button, it tells you the battery, it says 96%. Um, I love the display on it, it's, it's one of these old displays that reminds me a lot of old Nokia phones. So what it's going to do now is start working out dosage. Now I've got a bit of radium compass around my neck, so that's why it's going to be a bit higher than background. So anyway, I want to, there's several modes on this, so let's go through the different modes. You have, oh, I shall go off the menu a second, there's a lot of functions on this. So... We'll go, we don't want food sample testing, so let's go off of that one. There's large font, this is one I use quite a lot. Um, you also notice that the screen rotates depending on how you're holding it. So you can have it displayed various ways around. Because the nice thing is it's got a little wall mount there, so you can just hang it on your wall and have a display like this. It's generally designed to work in a widescreen sort of landscape mode. So you can either have it display, one, this is one of the reasons I wanted to get one of these, you can have it display in micro sieverts. Let's see if I remember which buttons do the correct things. Then I want this one. You can have so micro sieverts or sievert display. Milli Rontgen, although it's technically millirem on the measurement, because um, it's exactly one tenth of a um, sort of. It's doing it like essentially one that's one tenth of the sievert, which is um, a rem technically display, not a uh, Rontgen, because Rontgens aren't quite one tenth. But anyway. And one thing I really wanted on the Geiger counter with a decently high range that was digital was a CPM function. So anyway, I know what people will be saying, does it click? So yes, let's turn the clicking on. I usually turn it off uh, when I'm using them all the time. But there we go. It's got a little piezo speaker in it that clicks. So you can have a speaker on, you can have an alarm on, you can change the volume of alarm. You can change all the thresholds for the alarms and all of that sort of thing. Fast estimate timer, this is worth displaying. I've got that set to five seconds. You can put this on a load of different sort of times but I like it on five seconds it means the screen refreshes faster um, but it will change the range quickly so if you put it next to something quite radioactive it adjusts to it quickly whereas if you have that on 60 seconds it's a much smoother display but it means it's kind of not great if you're around something radioactive that's the thing I really like about my therapy the display will really quickly change based on the levels of radiation you're encountering there's power saving modes I've not bothered playing around with those anyway that's those. There's display options. But you can go through loads of things. A lot of this is just changing the display. Anyway, let's go through the actual main functions. There is a Wi-Fi logging on this. I've not got that working yet. I'm assuming it works fine. I'm assuming it's just because I've been a bit lazy and not played with all the features yet. I've not got a proper thing. The thing I like as well on this display is in the smaller bits of it, you will still see the Milli Ronken or micro sieverts or whatever else based on the display you're currently using. The display you currently are selected will be the bigger one, and in the corner you'll have the smaller displays, which is kind of always a nice feature. So you can hear it says 25 CPM, and then it says whatever the micro sieverts are on the millironcons are 10 flat. So now let's bring it up to a radioactive check source. And you'll see that immediately jumps up and starts logging higher doses. So yeah, the reason it's doing that is because, again, radium compass. Um, so yeah, that's that. There's also quite a good mode on this, which is like the data logging type mode. So let's switch to that. 
text mode is just quite useful. Again, this shows you sort of how long you've had it running for, how much you've been exposed to, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, if we go to graphic mode, this is quite useful. So it's where you can have it log sort of on a chart like this. If you want to see when it's peaked and gone back to background. Right, it's definitely using the top GM tube at the moment for the lower range stuff. There we go, so that's... Let's get the radium right next to the tube. And let's go back to the font mode. As I said, there's also a food sample testing mode, but personally I wouldn't really ever use that. So, um... I don't want that, that's on the food mode. Large font, there we go. So as you can see, it's quite responsive. So all in all, it seems very good for what it is. It's powered by one 18650 battery that you can replace, and it obviously charges in here when it's plugged in via USB. But all in all, I quite like it. Now, we're going to do a little stress test on it, because why not? So I'm going to replace the radium, and I'm going to get some strontium-90 and some cesium-137. And what I want to see is, can we get it to derp out? Now, one of the things that makes this quite good as sort of a middle-of-the-road consumer Geiger counter is the fact it's meant to go according to the technical specifications up to something like 45 millisieverts, or that's about 4.5 Röntgen, how they've measured it on here. And that's pretty good, which, um, because on a lot of the sort of £100 range consumer Geiger counters, they only go up to like 1 millisievert, if that. A lot of them say they go up to 1 millisievert, and they don't even do that. So let's get some stronger radionuclides, and let's see just how high this thing will go. Right, so, let's get the strontium and the cesium, and pop them directly under where the GM tube sits. So, here's the bit of cesium-137. So, a very strong beta emitter also emits a fair bit of gamma. Let's get it right under the tube. I need to get under the bottom tube, don't I? So, let me just make sure that's in frame. There we go. That's that. Now let's get the strong TM90. Put that there as well. Right, let's have a read of what, how high it goes. So we're at 30 uh, milliwonken. For some reason it's decided to flip the screen upside down, but there we go. Now I'm wondering at some point if it switches to the other tube. So what I'm going to do is put one of the bits round to this side, just to check in case it's actually going to the other tube. All right. Because if it switches to the wrong tube, um, you know, it'll probably max out the reading on one tube and then we'll get a lower reading. Now, let me just try putting that directly under that tube and that directly under this tube. Let's see how that affects the reading. Now, I kind of have a feeling that although this might technically max out at 45 um, millisieverts, it's never going to go that high. Just due to... Um, Oh, look at that. You can actually saturate the tubes. See that? That tube just then saturated. I wonder what happens if we get the other tube and we just put the check sources next to the other tube. Hmm. 
I've got one more test I can do on this to see how high the results are. And that's with these two check sources here to also get um, a load of radium dials and stick it under the, um, stick the radium dials underneath it and see how high we can get the reading to then go. Turn the speaker off because it might get a bit annoying. So let's pop this on top of here and see how high it goes on there now. I haven't actually got the strontium and the cesium next to it at the moment. But, hmm, interesting. It is actually going much higher, it seems, based on these two, if it wants to focus. Or is it going to stop about 30 millironcgen again? Because I can tell you, this is a lot higher than um, 300 microsieverts, I know that for a fact. Right, now it's reading this, let me also put the cesium and everything next to it and see what happens then. Because I get the funny feeling that this might actually... Again, although it's definitely performing better than something like the SOX O1M, it might really kind of struggle on high radiation fields, a bit like the Terra, um, you know, a bit like the SOX does, whereas the Terra P, you know, will just keep counting. So, let's put these two on it as well. Oh, that's went up a bit then, I think. Hmm, interesting. I'm just going to move it around on here to see if that affects the dosage at all. Oh, that's gone a bit higher then. Oh, it's going higher again. Okay. Yeah, it's being exposed to a lot more than 50 millironcgen. Right, so... I definitely don't think this is a bad Geiger counter for the hundred sort of pound to hundred and twenty pound retail price. These are actually excellent. However, the problem is that the Terra P still exists, and for not much more money, you could get a Terra P. So let me um, show you that compared to a Terra P. What I also just want to quickly show you is a gamma only model I've got. Um, see this one? This is one of these old nuclear industry ones. Um, that you can sometimes buy quite cheaply second hand. So let me just show you something. So let's stick that here so you should be able to see it. And let's see what this says in microsieverts once um, that finishes adjusting. It's a bit slower to update this one, but what are we at now? 27.8 micro, oh, 278 microsieverts. So the microsieverts actually aren't all that different on these at the moment. I just want to see if that updates again to a higher amount of microsieverts. Bear in mind this thing's only gamma, it doesn't detect beta in this one. 275. Hmm, maybe then. It's fairly accurate, but the millironcgen reading still seems a bit too low on there for me. Um, but anyway, let me just go get the therapy. Oh, that's just gone up again, 355. Anyway, while it's doing that, let me get the therapy and we'll stick that on there as well to get a reading. Right, therapy with the window closed on the bottom. Let's stick that on as well. See what he says. Again, we're already at 700 on the therapy. Again, there is probably some beta getting through the casing of the therapy, even with the sort of shielded casing on it. Um, so we're getting 713 odd of the therapy, but only 251 on there. 267, 279. So I would guess that this report's a bit low. Now, just for shits and giggles, what I want to do quickly is just turn all the others off, get the therapy, and stick the therapy of the beta window open on top of all the samples there and see how high that measures it in uh, microsieverts, millisieverts, etc. And there you go, as you can see, that's quite a bit higher because it's at about 2.5 millisieverts, 2.4 millisieverts, which would be 240 millironcgen. So, yeah, that is reporting quite a bit higher. Um, Again, I think sometimes... Oh, that's just fallen over. I think if you put the cesium directly on the tube, it gets an even higher reading with this.
Yep, that's uh, three millisieverts in it. Oh, six millisieverts. 5.6 millisieverts. But yeah, the point is with this that, again, every time I end up reviewing something that's not the therapy, I ended up being a bit disappointed because it just seems the therapies are really the best um, Geiger counters in this price range point. Bear in mind, a basic therapy is about $150 pounds sterling. This is a therapy plus, which is a bit better. But my point is, again, that the operational range of therapy does um, is very good. So, regarding this Geiger counter, yeah, it's not bad. Um, I'm not disappointed with it, but just, again, I think if you were going to spend 110 to £120 pounds on a Geiger counter, I would say spend £30 pounds more and get a therapy. Um, just because, so far, I am yet to find anything the therapy fails me on. I just really wish the therapies had a CPM function on them. Um, but there you go. The uh, therapy still ends up winning again.